Hey everybody. Okay, time to get down to the nitty gritty. The general idea here is simple. We're going to use a straight line to predict one variable given another. You already know that. But the details behind the curtain are complex. My job is to make the details as clear as possible. So here we go. At this point, you should be comfortable with the idea. If our data is roughly linear, then our goal is to draw a straight line through our data that most closely mimics the behavior of our dots and use that line to predict y for a given value of x. We're back with our exam score data here. Let's use it to help us figure things out. So we've decided our data is linear. That means our next step is to come up with the line. The big question is, how do we define the best fitting line through our data? There are several ways we could go about this. For example, we could just eyeball it and simply draw a line through the data that we think is appropriate. Well, here's the problem with that. I might draw this line, but you might draw this one, or another person might decide this is the best line. We need to come up with a rigorous mathematical definition of what we consider the best line. Well, get your thinking caps on, folks, because I'm about to show you the magical line that we and everyone else in the world of statistics consider the best line. So here we go. Let's say this line is the best line through the dots. We can model it with a simple linear equation, y equals b plus mx. Don't forget, we use y hat equals b plus mx, the hat implying the y value is an estimate. We're going to be interested in this distance right here. This is the all-important distance right here. This is the vertical distance from any data point directly to the line. Let's think about how we can reference this distance notationally. The value at this arbitrarily chosen data point is simply this y value, right? And the value for this point is the y hat value from the line that we could get by evaluating our linear equation at this x value. So this distance that we're interested in can be thought of as our y value minus our y hat value. Well, this distance has a name. It's called a residual. Okay, I need you to really focus now because things are going to get a bit complicated. I want you to think about calculating the residual for every data point we have. We have 16 dots here, which means we would have 16 residual values. Okay, let's think about this. We want our line to mimic the behavior of the dots, which means we would like each dot to be close to the line, which means we want each residual value to be as small as possible. So, here's what's done to get what we'll define as the best fitting line. First, we calculate each residual, or another way to say that is we calculate y minus y hat for each data point. Second, we square each of those residuals. Keep in mind, we wanted each residual to be small, which means we'll want each squared residual value to be small as well. Incidentally, the reason for squaring the residuals is similar to the reasons we squared the difference with the standard deviation formula back in chapter 2. Okay, lastly, we're going to add up all our squared residual values to get one single, all-important, magical number. Let's call it the sum of the squared residuals, and we'll denote it by this notation here. Remember, it's going to be just a single number, and we want that number to be as small as possible. That's the key point to this entire chapter, folks. We're defining the best fitting line to be the one particular line such that the sum of the squared residuals for that line to be smaller than any other line. That is the line we will define to have the best fit. It's the line whose sum of its squared residuals is the least it could be. That's why we call the line the least squares regression line. Now you know where the name comes from. Let me show you what I mean. Take a look at this other data set. Now, this data set has nothing to do with our exam score problem. I'm just using another data set here as an example to explain the idea of the sum of the squared residuals. So we have two important things on this graph. Our scatter plot, that's the red dots, and our blue straight line, that's going to be our regression line. Our goal is to draw a line that most closely mimics the behavior of the dots. Notice that the line I have, I'm starting with, is y equals 0.27x plus 3.4. So that's a y-intercept of 3.4 and a slope of 0.27. 
I'm going to keep the y-intercept of 3.4 constant. That's going to be my pivot point. Watch what happens. Now, notice down below, we have the sum of the squared residuals, right? Now, watch what happens. I'm going to take the line and very quickly pivot it to what I think is probably the line that most closely mimics the, the behavior of the dots. And it looks like it's going to be roughly right around there, roughly, right? Take a look at the value of the slope. It changed to negative 0.21. And look at the sum of the squared residuals. I get a value of 2.41. Well, let's let's tweak the line and see what happens. Let's move away from roughly where I want it to be. Look what's happening to the sum of the squared residuals. It's getting bigger as I go away, right? Let's get back to where I want. It's getting smaller. 2.4, that's pretty good right there. Uh, let me go down and see what happens. So look at this sum of the squared residuals. I have a value of 2.4 right now. If I go down a little bit with the line, look, the sum of the squared residuals is getting bigger. The farther I get away from where it probably should be, it's getting bigger and bigger. Now I've got a sum of the squared residuals of 3.23. Again, way back up here, sum of the squared residuals in the 4 region. So it looks like roughly right around 2.4 is the best that I can do. So there you go. That's what I'm going to call the least squares regression line. The particular line such that it most closely mimics the behavior of the dots because the sum of the squared residuals is the smallest it can be at 2.4. So there is our least squares regression line, y equals negative 0.19x plus 3.4. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of what we're talking about. Back to our exam score data now. Remember, the goal here is to come up with an equation for our best fitting line that we can use to predict y given x, right? In other words, we need b and m, the y-intercept and the slope. Once we have those two numbers, we're good to go to predict a student's exam score if we know how long they studied. Well, it turns out that if we employ this concept of least squares, then the formulas for B and M can be determined exactly. And here they are. Now, the derivations of these formulas are a bit beyond the scope of this class, so you'll have to trust me when I say that they're accurate and not in dispute. It's important for you to see these formulas, but even more important for you to have a rough general idea of the least squares idea that resulted in the formula. Okay, back to our problem. For our example, if we plug in our data into the formulas for the y-intercept and the slope, it turns out we get a y-intercept of b equaling 60 and a slope of m equaling 2. Don't worry, I'm not going to have you calculate those numbers. It will be your job to simply use them. So, we've got our least squares regression equation for this data. y hat equals 60 plus 2 times x. We'll go ahead and use that in the next lesson. For now, it's enough that you have a general idea of what's going on behind the scenes. Good job, everybody.